Okay, so we are discussing the Erdős Katz theorem, which is a central limit type theorem that lies at the heart of probabilistic number theory, and this is what we want to prove. So, this is the theorem due to Erdős and Katz. goes back all the way to 1940 and it states the following. As x goes to infinity, then for any real number a, the proportion of the number of natural numbers up to x for which omega of n minus log log n over square root of log log n is less than or equal to a is asymptotic to the Gaussian distribution. Okay, so the integral from infinity to a of 1 over square root 2 pi e raised to the minus t square by 2 dt, which means that these, uh, these normalized variables related to omega of n satisfy the Gaussian, dis they converge weakly to the Gaussian distribution. Now, a small remark here in this theorem it does not matter whether you write n or x in the denominator, because unless n is, so if you take all the n's up to x, unless uh, your n is very very small, asymptotically root log log n and root log log x match each other and it is the asymptotics that we are concerned about. So, you can restate the same theorem with the denominator replaced by square root of root log log, square root of log log x. Okay, now, as we have discussed before, the Gaussian distribution is determined by its moments. So, you can, in order to prove this theorem, you can actually evaluate asymptotics of the moments of this quantity here. And this goes back to a theorem of Turan with the help of which one proves the Hardy Ramanujan theorem as I discussed in our previous classes. So, what we need to do is, so we use the method of moments to prove this. What does that mean? So, we take 1 over x summation n up to x Okay, of the kth powers of omega n minus log log n over root log log x. Okay, we evaluate this and we see that as as x goes to infinity this is asymptotic to m sub k for each k okay. for each positive integer k the kth power moments of this normalized function is asymptotic to m sub k which is which matches exactly the kth power moments of the Gaussian distribution. And what are these? So, m sub k turns out to be equal to k factorial over k over 2 factorial times 2 raised to the k over 2 if k is even and it is 0 if k is odd. 
okay? and I leave it as an exercise for you to verify that this is exactly equal to 1 over square root 2 pi integral from minus infinity to infinity of the function t raised to the k times e raised to the minus t square over 2 dt. Okay? Now, the Erdős-Katz theorem has many different types of proof. It is a very well studied topic and the proof that we are going to present today is due to Granville and Soundra Rajan. Uh, and the main idea, in fact this has been the theme of our whole course, the main idea is to associate arithmetic functions of interest to us to appropriate random variables, bring in probability theory to predict what would have happened if those numbers, if those functions were indeed interpreted as random variables, okay, that gives us a heuristic guess and then use methods to various types of number theoretic methods to make explicit uh, the conclusions that you derive through probability theory. That is how this is a very nice uh, interplay between probability and number theory. So, the idea, crucial ideas here are the following. So, what we want to show is first of all as x goes to infinity we want to show that this is asymptotic to m sub k. In other words what we want to show is that suppose we take summation n up to x of omega of n minus log log n and raise it to the power k, this turns out to be equal to m sub k times log log x raised to the k plus something which is little o of So, I mean to say log log x raised to the k over 2, there is a square root there plus little o of log log x raised to the k over 2 okay, as x goes to infinity. Okay, k is some fixed integer. So, since m sub k is 0 for odd values of k, for odd values of k you only have to show that this, uh, this uh, sum corresponding to the odd power k is little o of log log x raised to the k over 2. Okay? So, last time we indicated how one would actually address questions like this. So, what we did was we in fact we took these quantities and related them to some abstract uh, random variables. And using central limit theorem for those random variables, we predicted a Gaussian distribution and then we have to have a mechanism by which we can come back from that abstract probabilistic setting to this explicit setting here. And as I mentioned before, you can actually replace n by x, okay, so you can actually put x here, this is equivalent to the previous statements because unless as I just mentioned unless n is very very small uh, log log n and log log x would be very close to each other in when you are talking about all the numbers from 1 to x. Okay. So, what did we see last time? What were the number theoretic functions and the random variables that we had constructed last time? So, you take this following function for a prime p define g sub p of n to be equal to 1 if p divides n and 0 otherwise and define f sub p of n to be equal to g sub p of n minus 1 over p. So, this is 1 minus 1 over p if p divides n and just minus 1 over p if p does not divide n. Okay? Now, 
we want to bring our study of omega n minus log log x down to the study of sums of these functions. And we had made an initiation in this direction last time. Also, we compare these g sub p's to abstract random variable x sub p, which takes it is a Bernoulli random variable and it takes the value 1 with probability 1 over p and it takes the value 0 with probability 1 minus 1 over p. Okay. So, if you look at these functions as random variables in the set of natural numbers up to say some capital N. Okay, they as capital N becomes very, very large, these g sub p's behave very much like x sub p's. Okay, now, x sub p is a random variable and central limit theorem applied to x sub p minus 1 by p gives you something nice. Okay, so, I am not going to prove the central limit theorem from probability theory, I am just going to state it. There are various types of central limit theorem. I am quoting a theorem of Lindbergh and Feller. What does this say? It says that if you take as some variable, let us say some y is going to infinity and suppose you are going to sum up x p minus 1 by p for all the primes up to y. Okay then the sum them up and take their kth moments. The central limit theorem actually predicts that the expected value of summation p less than or equal to y x sub p minus 1 over p, okay, the whole thing raised to the k, this is the random variable now, kth power of sums of x p minus 1 by p okay, and the expected value of this whole thing, okay, it turns out to be equal to m sub k times log log y raised to the k over 2 plus little o of log log y raised to the k over 2 as y goes to infinity. I am going to use this okay, and refer you to your probability course for a proof of this theorem. Now, how do we go from x sub p to f sub p? This is first we have to go from x sub p to f sub p and then we have to go from f sub p to these quantities here that we are looking at. So, here I state a theorem, this was the approach of Granville and Soundra Rajan's proof. So, this says the following. Let us take notice, I am what I do is I take, so I take an x which is going to infinity and I take y to be a variable which is a function of x which also goes to infinity along with x. So, let us take y to be equal to something that grows with x and it goes to infinity as x goes to infinity. Then what happens? This theorem states that 1 over x times summation n less than or equal to x of summation p less than or equal to y f sub p of y, uh, sorry f sub p of n, 
okay you raise this to the k okay so for every n you take sums of f sub p of n as p runs over all the primes up to y and take the kth power of the sum okay and consider its expected value in the set of all natural numbers up to x what happens so you have it is actually it turns out to be equal to the expected value of this random variable abstract random variable plus an error term okay so this is where most of the work is going to happen in the proof of the erdash katz theorem so this is equal to expected value of summation p less than or equal to y x sub p minus 1 over p the kth power of this sum okay plus an error term where the implied constant depends on k so we are doing this for every positive integer k let us take some positive integer k and fix it o sub k of y raised to the k over x times log y raised to the k okay another way of writing this error term is pi of y raised to the k over x okay so clearly if you want your error term to go to 0 you have to choose y in such a way that not only is it going to infinity along with x but pi of y raised to the k over x must go to 0 as x goes to infinity and this must happen for any positive integer k okay so the variable y has to be chosen cleverly and then of course so i'm going to this this uh, theorem itself is going to require a whole class to prove to, for today i'm going to assume it and in our next lecture on thursday we will provide a proof of this theorem so for today we are just going to assume it and we are going to actually work on relating okay so these are the moments of this are known okay which you can write as something which is closer to what we want plus an error term now what we want to do is we want to relate this sum with the function that we have omega of n minus log log x so this was a lemma that we proved last time so recall so let me just state instead of precisely stating that lemma let me just state what we uh, how how we make the connection between this sum and the the the, the function that we want so for 1 less than or equal to n less than or equal to x okay omega of n minus log log x is equal to with y as chosen above y is something that goes to infinity typically y would be it would not be as big as x it would be smaller than x but it would be a function of x that grows to infinity along with x so this is equal to p less than or equal to y f sub p of n okay plus i want to be able to write this as a sum of these f sub p's but it will not obviously be an exact equality there will be some remainder okay where this r of x itself okay this r of x would be uniform in your choice of n it will work for any n between 1 and x it will not depend on n, n it will be a uniform function of x moreover this r of x will also grow rapidly but it is still suitably controlled and this control is what i will specify later okay r of x would be o of something 
So, for now what we do is this is we have to evaluate moments of this function here omega of n minus log log x. I write it as sum of these va random variables on the smaller spaces of numbers up to x ok. So, sums of these f sub p's plus something that remains which I am going to indicate which I am going to like sort of uh, just call r of x ok. Last time we had seen that if you choose y to be equal to x raised to the 1 over log 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 x then you get an error term here. But why did we make that type of a choice of y was not clear. So, we will we'll actually expand this put it in the setting where we have and then see why we need that type of a choice of y ok. So, now what do we have? Let us take 1 over x summation n up to x omega of n minus log log x raised to the k ok. Let us write this in terms of sums of these functions this is equal to. So, from here on there is just some calculations standard calculations to simplify our sum. So, we write this as summation p less than or equal to y f sub p of n ok this is one whole sum plus r of x raised to the k ok. Now, we apply binomial theorem to this expression here what do you have? You have a plus b raised to the k. So, this sum will turn out to be equal to 1 over x times summation n up to x ok. Then you have summation j going from 0 to k, k choose j times this sum raised to the j times r of x raised to the k minus j ok. So, standard application of binomial theorem to the sums in questions. Now, what we do is we take the case j equal to k separately ok since so that we can apply theorem a and rest whatever you have we will show that it gets absorbed into an error term. So, this is equal to I am breaking down the sum into the case when j is equal to k and another part where j runs from 0 to k minus 1. So, we have 1 over x into summation n less than or equal to x and you have. So, when you take j equal to k what are you left with? You are just left with summation p less than or equal to y f sub p of n raised to the k ok. And then you have the remaining part plus 1 over x summation n up to x ok. Then you have j going from 0 to k minus 1 k choose j then you have summation f sub p of n raised to the j times r of x raised to the k minus j ok. Then our next step would be to actually see how we can apply theorem A to these quantities ok and bring it down to the expected value of these variables that we already know 
by probability theory. Okay. So, what is this now with further simplification what we do is the following. So, this is of course, just by theorem A we write this as the expected value of the sums of over the sums of primes up to y of the kth power basically the kth power of the sum okay plus o sub k of what do you have y raised to the k over x times log y raised to the k. Now, for the remaining part what we do is we take the maximum value of the terms in the sum out. Okay. So, what we do is notice we had started with this uh, when we mentioned r of x what did we know? It is a function that is growing to infinity with x becomes very very large and so your irrespective of what your j is r of x raised to the k minus j would be less than less than r of x raised to the k. Okay. So, this r of x to the k we can bring out so let us bring this out. Okay. Then what we do is we have now in fact what we can also do another interchange of summation. So, let us first just bring r of x to the k out it, this will be sufficient for our purposes later on when you are trying to sharpen the error term you will have to go back to this method and do neater calculations, but uh, for now for, for our purposes this type of an estimate is enough. Okay. Now, what I do is we write j going from 0 to k minus 1 k choose j. Okay. Then you write 1 over x into summation. So, I am doing an interchange of sums here. Okay, and you have summation p up to y f sub p of n raised to the j. All right. So what happens here is, okay, I'm going to so the the expected value part I leave as it is. Plus you have o sub k of y raised to the k over x times log y raised to the k. Okay. And here now what I do is as you run from 0 to k minus 1 what is the absolute maximum of this term? I will consider that and I will take that out. Okay. So, all we will be left, so this would be less than or equal to r of x raised to the k times the absolute maximum of this part as j runs from 0 to k minus 1, you bring that out and then you have j going from 0 to k minus 1, k choose j, you just apply your simple binomial theorem there which is which will be 2 raised to the k. Is there a question? Which sorry, can you be a little louder? No, 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 this is not this is not in the denominator, this is all in the numerator only. Okay, so let me let me just write down, then perhaps then it will become uh, clear to you. Let me move to the next board. So plus okay, r of x raised to the k okay, and then I am going to replace this by less than or equal to whatever you had from the case when j was equal to k 
and then you are bounding above the case the other part as follows. Okay. So, you take the maximum over j running between 0, 1, 2 up to k minus 1 okay. and then what do you have? 1 over x times summation n less than or equal to x okay, absolute of p less than or equal to y f sub p of n raised to the j times when once you bring that out all you are left with is the sum j going from 0 to k minus 1 k choose j which is at most 2 raised to the k. So, I am going to just bring that here. And then we go back and look at each of these sums carefully. So, let us write out. So, this is expected value of the the abstract random variables that we were talking about. Then you have one error term here O sub k of y raised to the k over x times log y raised to the k. Okay. Then you have plus. Now, here what I do is I further bound this above by suitable quantities. So, again let me make this less than or equal to okay. and typically when you see double sums okay, one technique that gets very commonly used in analytic number theory is just the Cauchy Schwartz inequality. Okay. So, what do we do here? So, you have 2 raised to the k times r of x raised to the k times 1 over x okay, times summation of n less than or equal to x 1 times this term. Okay, let us call this some g of n. So, if you apply Cauchy Schwartz inequality to 1 times g of n as n runs over x, first what you have to do is you have to take the sum n less than or equal to x 1 square which is just 1 okay, raised to the half and then you have the other sum summation n less than or equal to x times the square of this quantity here. Okay. So, now whether you take the square of absolute value or square of something it is the same these are all real numbers. So, what do you have summation p less than or equal to y f sub p of n okay, raised to the power 2 j and this whole thing raised to the half. Okay. So, what are you left with? This part is just, so I am going to absorb 2 to the k into an error estimate since k is something fixed. So, I am just going to write this as O sub k of r of x raised to the k times. So, what do you have here root x over x right? and then you have this whole sum raised to the power half. So, basically you are left with 1 by x one by x of this times the inner sum of f sub p of n okay, raised to the 2 j okay, raised to the half and I forgot I should actually be, I am taking the maximum over all the j's running from 0 to k minus 1. So, 
so sub k times 2 raise uh, so r of x raised to the k times the maximum over j suitable j's which you know what they are of this term raised to the half right so what are you left with now we apply the central limit theorem to this particular term here which is your kth sums of the the, the kth power of sums of x p minus 1 over p and central limit theorem is actually telling you that this is equal to a main term plus an error term right. So, what, what was the main term there? The main term was m sub k times log log x raised to the k over 2 actually you have sums of p up to y. So, I should be taking y this is crucial of course, later y itself is a function of x. Okay. So, this is some this will be some function of x we will specify that plus little o of log log y raised to the k by 2. Okay plus you have an error term y raised to the k over x times log y raised to the k. Okay. And then you have this, these sums here. Okay. Now, we apply this theorem A again to these sums over here these sums can be written as expected value of the kth power of these x p minus 1 over p raised to the 2 j plus an error term. But now, instead of applying that theorem to k, you are actually applying it to 2 times j. You can apply it to any positive integer. So, you are now applying it to 2 times j, where j runs from 0 to k minus 1. Okay. And notice, so it is equal to a main term plus an error term. So, it is certainly less than less than the main term itself, because all of this will really just go into the error term. So, what you end up getting is O sub k times r of x raised to the k okay, times maximum over j running from 0 to k minus 1. Okay. And now, we have to be careful here. So, it is half the square root of something, but what is that something? It, that something is certainly less than less than your uh, m sub. So, you will have m sub 2 j Okay, so, this will be some moment the some function that just depends on j which is less than or equal to k times log log y raised to the 2 j over 2 which is just j and then the whole thing raised to the half. Okay. So, this whole thing, this particular error term can be further absorbed into something bigger, which will still be less than the main term. So, you have r of x raised to the k okay, times now j goes as, as high as k minus 1. So, you have log log y raised to the k minus 1 over 2 coming from the half here okay, times m sub 2 j raised to the half, okay, but j is something less than or equal to k and basically this can be treated as a constant. It can get absorbed into the implied constant. Okay. So, you have again 
O sub k of r of x raised to the k times log log y raised to the k minus 1 over 2 that is the maximum possible value that this function can take as j runs from 0 to k minus 1 and this is good since k minus 1 over 2 is less than k by 2. But along with k minus this this power log log y raised to the k minus 1 over 2 r of x raised to the k is also tagging along. So, we want to make sure we choose r of x which is small enough so that this whole thing combined will be little low little o of log log y raised to the k over 2. So, let me summarize so far what do we have? We have shown by a standard application of binomial theorem and our information about relationship between f p of n and abstract Bernoulli random variables x sub p exploiting all of that along with the central limit theorem for these x p minus 1 over p is what we end up getting is the following. So, so we have got that 1 over x summation n less than or equal to x omega of n minus log log x raised to the k. What is this equal to? This is equal to m sub k times log log y raised to the k over 2 okay, plus an error term O sub k of y raised to the k over x log y. raised to the k okay, plus another error term which is a function r of x raised to the k times log log y raised to the k minus 1 over 2. Okay. This is as far as we have come and in order to make sure that as x goes to infinity this sum converges to this term here. Okay. What we need to first do is we have to make a suitable choice of y first of all so that log log y would be asymptotic to log log x. Okay. Then our y should also ensure that pi of y raised to the k over x will be going to 0 as x goes to infinity. And finally, that choice of y that you made, it will give you some r of x, but that r of x should be small enough so that this r of x raised to the k times log log y raised to the k minus 1 over 2 also remains little o of log log y raised to the k over 2. I forgot to write that. So, we want to make a choice of y so that all of this here will get absorbed in this and log log y would be asymptotic to log log x. Okay? So, it, there are you can experiment with different functions of x, but if we choose the function that I had specified last time, if we choose, so recall the lemma, let y equal to this function x raised to the power 1 over log log okay you can verify that if this happens then log log y would be asymptotic to log log x 
I leave that as an exercise for you to check. So, with this choice furthermore we saw that if we take omega of n minus log log x it turns out to be equal to sums of these f p of n's as p runs over all the primes up to y plus an error term which was O of log 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 x. Okay? So, this is basically your r of x. Your r of x is a function which is small enough so that r of x is O of log 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 x. Okay? The benefit of taking log 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 x is that it is little O of log log x raised to the epsilon for any epsilon greater than 0. Okay? So, when you are combining r of x raised to the k with log log y uh, with the power of log log y which is log log x. So, if you have a power of log log x which is a little bit less than k over 2, you can apply you can multiply it with any power of log 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 x, but the overall result would still be little o of log log x raised to the k by 2. Okay? So, with this choice, this was the reason why we chose y in this way. Okay? When you do that, you end up getting that this is equal to m sub k of, so you know wherever you have y, you can replace it with x. Okay? Whenever you have log log y, raised to the k over 2 plus little o of log log x which is exactly what we wanted to prove. Okay? So, this takes care of the Erdős Katz theorem, but there is an important component that we are missing and that component is how to relate the sums f sub p of n. You have got these okay, and you have on the other hand you have. So, of course, you also have. So, you can say this is the expected value, but expected value over which probability space? The space of all natural numbers up to x. Okay? And you have the expected value of summation p less than or equal to y x sub p minus 1 over p. Okay? this whole thing raised to the k and the expected value of this kth power of this sum. How to relate these two? This is some Bernoulli random variable on an abstract probability space. This is something very explicit okay? and the, this was a crucial idea of Granville and Soundrarajan and this will take us time. So, we will actually delegate this to our next class. So, um, I am done for today. So, I will stop.